أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين يا كان عبده وياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين مقامی اجتماع حضور سیز ہے تو مقامی اجتماع ہاؤس ڈفرنٹ مجالس I remember that I perhaps attended the Ishtama of the Northeast region or the Hartlepool region. But anyhow, although I do not normally attend these Ishtamas, contrary to the normal custom, I am attending this. And one of the reasons for attending was this, is that I should attend myself and see that Khudam al and at Faro al what are their interests? And secondly, that in this region, Makami region, I reside here myself. Also, there are other regional ishtamas being held, and Sadr Sahib said that it is his re- desire and request that from this ishtama, I could address all the other ishtamas being held. <coughs> Anyhow, why are these ishtamas held? We need to understand this. <coughs> ishtamas are held for our tarbiyat, our moral upbringing and education. They are held on various levels, on a national and local level. It is human nature that if someone is reminded about something or something is brought in view in front of a person and repeated again and again, then a person remembers that and his attention remains upon that. And an Ahmadi should always keep his attention towards this. That what is his real purpose? <coughs> and in order to remind an Ahmadi to this, these ishtamas are held. <coughs> there we see that there are sometimes refreshers courses held. People of various professions, an organization is made for them. And sometimes for the training of people, and in order to update their education, these functions are held. And in order to inculcate interest, (coughs) seminars are held according to people's fields. In the same way, these ishtamas and gatherings are held. Every khadam and every tifl must always keep this in view. (coughs) 
Keeping this human nature in view, which a person always needs to be reminded about, Allah the Almighty in the Holy Quran has drawn our attention towards this. And the Holy Quran is that book. It is its claim, which is that the Islamic law, the Sharia, is that its teachings are according to human nature. This is the claim of the Holy Quran. So this aspect of human nature, if a person's attention is drawn towards it again and again, then he always will remember that purpose, which is the purpose of his creation. Drawing attention towards this, Allah the Almighty has said in the Holy Quran, وَزَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الزِّكْرَ And the verse goes on in this manner. So this month, admonish. Because admonishing is something beneficial for the believers. Or, remind them. Because to remind something or repeat something, it is something which is positive and something which is beneficial. <coughs> what are our obligations? The obligations of an Ahmadi. What are the obligations of an Ahmadi child, an Ahmadi youngster, an Ahmadi elder, man and woman? What are these obligations we must strive to achieve? The first obligation which is the actual purpose of our creation, we need to keep that before us and keep that in view. Allah the Almighty says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا That I have not created man and jinn, but that he worships me. Allah says, this is your purpose. You should always remember this objective. You need to always keep this purpose in view. And Hazur says, this is one of the biggest obligations amongst all the obligations of a believer. Without worship, the life of a believer is no life at all. <coughs> this is why Allah the Almighty has drawn attention towards this. With even normal human people, with even normal people who help us in any way, we are very thankful to them. And we show much gratitude towards a person who helps us. So Allah, who is Rabbul Alameen, Lord of all the worlds, who even before we were born, even before we were created, He made an amazing universe. Not only the earth, not only the land, but He also made the stars, the wind, and the world, and the universe. He made all of these things. He created all of this for us. <coughs> so in order to be grateful to Him, in order to be thankful to Him, it is also our obligation. <laughs> that as Allah the Almighty says that be thankful to me, we should be thankful to Him in this manner. And as I have just explained, that Allah the Almighty has drawn our attention towards worship, that worship because this is your purpose and this is the purpose of your creation and within this purpose will also be shown your gratitude <coughs> and your sentiments of gratefulness and thankfulness will be shown through this worship. Allah the Almighty said that whether a person is rich or poor, whether a person is someone significant or insignificant, it is the obligation of a person, whoever he is, that if he truly believes in God, then he needs to keep his attention engrossed towards Allah and he needs to take care of his worship. It is not that a person or rich person thinks that by giving some janda or sadka or someone else, by doing some work of charity, 
thinks that I am alleviated from my obligations. I do not need to worship anymore because I have given this charity. Rather, the commandments given by Almighty Allah that after believing in the unseen, what has been said is to worship and to pray, and then after that is said to perform financial sacrifice. That is, financial sacrifices come after. Even if you do it under sympathy, to help somebody, to take care of somebody, that comes afterwards. Your first obligation is this, that worship Allah and take care of your prayers. <coughs> Whenever the time comes for you to fulfill this obligation, every elder and every youngster, every rich person and every poor person, it is the obligation of all of them that in order to fulfill their obligations, in order to offer their prayers, they must go to perform prayer in the mosque. A poet has said a verse that they all stood in one place, Mahmud Arayas that when the time of prayer comes, a believer, whether he is rich or whether he is poor, whether he is a big person or just a small person, all of them, they immediately move towards the mosque. And they try in every single way possible that their prayers are erected and that their prayers are performed in congregation. This is the fundamental point that we need to always remember. Amongst the Atfal al as well, those who are 13 or 14 or 15 years of age. It is their obligation that as it is mentioned in the Hadith that people who are aged 7 to 10, their attention should be drawn towards prayer. And from 10 to 12, they should be made to do prayer forcefully so that their habit remains of offering the prayer. So therefore we need to keep this fundamental aspect always in view. That without prayers, a believer cannot be called a believer. He cannot ha fulfill the right of being a member of a divine community if he does not offer his prayer. We can go around saying that we are attached to Jamaat Ahmadiyya, but if we are not fulfilling that obligation that Allah the Almighty has placed upon us, and this is such an obligation which is actually the purpose of creation itself. So if we do not do this, then how can we say that we have believed in the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, or that we have believed in Islam and that we have done some great work? Islam and Ahmadiyyat, which is true Islam, it is the name of sacrifice. And worship can only be carried out through sacrifice Thousands of people say that we have this work, we have this engagement, we have this worldly purpose to fulfill. But Allah the Almighty has said that whatever objectives you have, your fundamental objective is worship. This is why always fulfill your right of prayer and never let your prayers go to waste or let them go. Many of those who come here, the majority of them, who have come from outside the UK, they have come from Pakistan. Allah the Almighty has bestowed great favor upon all of you that you have come here and now with complete freedom. Whatever you want to do, you can do. You can offer your prayers. You can perform the Azan. You can do Tabligh. Whereas in Pakistan, you are restricted from doing all of these things. So therefore, the requirement of thankfulness and great gratitude, that is, gratitude to Allah, and in order to repay the favor to Allah, because we cannot actually repay it in full, but we can try to repay that favor. And that requirement is that we must draw our attention towards worship. As I stated, that many people in Pakistan have come here due to the circumstances that are upon Ahmadis. If even after you have come here, after you have done asylum, there are many people who have done asylum. There are also many people who are very educated. There are other people who are business people. All of these people have come here. And the only reason they have come here is that because they are Ahmadi, the circumstances does not allow them to lead their lives normally, to lead their businesses, to carry out their jobs, to go about their education. They could not do any of these things properly in Pakistan. 
So it is a great favor of Allah the Almighty. What Allah has done for you and given you the opportunity to come here and you have only come here because you are an Ahmadi. And an Ahmadi should always remember that purpose that an Ahmadi has a distinguishing feature from other people and that distinguishing feature the first and foremost thing is his worship which distinguishes him from others. Other people have come and their economic situations have improved. Most people, apart from just a few exceptions, their economic situation has improved. This is also a source of being grateful. If a true person who is gratitude, if his realization of this has not died, then he always sees his own state. That what was I in Pakistan before and now what have I become here? And if he does this, his attention will be drawn towards gratitude. If he sees this from a financial perspective just. So all of these things, it makes a person, a true believer, submit before Almighty Allah and fall before Him. A person, a true person and true humanity is that when we are speaking normally, then we normally, with other people, then we say that there is no humanity that other person. I have done this and that for that person. But when the time came, and I asked him to do something for me, he did not even say thank you to me for what I did for him previously. Now, if we have this expectation of a person that he should thank us for what we have done for him, then Allah the Almighty who has bestowed so much favor upon us and we can never repay this favor ever, then if we do not be thankful to him, at least we should fulfill his commandments and we should draw our attention towards prayer. If youngsters draw their attention towards this, then the children will also draw attention towards this. Parents sometimes complain that the eight people or the children aged 9 to 10, they show interest towards religion and faith. And then after that, gradually and slowly, they become immersed in the environment outside. But if parents and elders show their example in their house, then this will not come about. I spoke about Mahmud and Ayaz. <coughs> that the rich and the poor are standing together in just one line. But there is also a story of Mahmud and Ayaz. There was a king and he had two people with him. One was a servant and another was another person who worked for him. And one of these people was always given instructions by the king and he always fulfilled that. And because of that, the other people, the other companions and workers they were very jealous of that person who the king's glance was always upon and they looked for an opportunity that how could we raise an issue against that person then once they found an opportunity because they found out that that person who the king really liked he used to go and ha secretly leave at night and he would go somewhere far off and into a certain enclosure or house he would go sit there and then he would come back and when he would sit there he would lock the door so those other people complain that that person who you say is greatly sympathetical towards you and loves you and compassionate towards you, he's looting your treasure. Every day at night he goes secretly and your treasure that he has looted, he goes there and he keeps burying it. He has made a room there and he has put a lock there and this is where he does all of that. This is what these people complained. So then the king, influenced by what they said, tried to find out what happened and they went there to see what he did. And what did that person do? That person would go there, he would open the door and there there used to be a kind of bag and there would be old clothes in that bag which he would take out. And he would look at these old clothes and then he would return. So they asked him that what is this that you do? He said, I used to be a poor person. You gave me so much respect, you gave me so much status. in terms of being grateful and to be thankful 
that all this grace that Allah has bestowed upon me. Because of all of this, I go and look at my old clothes on a daily basis so that no arrogance or boastfulness or pride ever comes into my heart and the sentiments of gratitude always increase within me. So Hazur says, this is gratitude. This is thankfulness. That in a true person, a true human who truly respects the values of humanity and fulfills its rights. So if this is the case, how much should a true believer be thankful up to Allah who has bestowed so much favor upon him and he has commanded so many things that we should fulfill? This is why you should always remember that this fundamental commandment of Allah that offer prayer and offer prayer on time, we should be fulfill it and always be grateful. Then this gratitude or thankfulness, there is so much blessing entailed within this being great, grateful. Allah the Almighty does not let this go to waste and does not leave it without blessing. If you offer prayer by congregation, then in comparison to offering prayer at home, you receive so many times more blessings. So on the one hand, you are being grateful for the blessings you have given and then for being grateful Allah the Almighty is giving you even more blessings and returning the blessings. This is such a blessing which you will not find anywhere else in the world. Allah the Almighty has said somewhere that a true believer He loves Allah most of all. Ashaddu hubba lillah. And he does not just profess verbal love of Allah. If he claims love of Allah, then he needs to fulfill what he asks of us. And the first thing that he asks of us is to worship him. Then in one place, he states that a believer is he who does jihad in the way of Allah. Now jihad is not jihad of the sword in this era. The promised Messiah, peace be upon him, when he came, he finished off that kind of jihad. And Allah the Almighty has finished it off. Or stopped it. And said that this jihad is not applicable just now. This is why the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, stopped that jihad. So what is jihad towards the faith? It is tabligh. Those resources and means that Allah the Almighty has given us, it is doing tabligh through that. There is the internet, or there are newspapers, or there are other forms of media. Through all of these, every person must see what role can they play using this. If he cannot do anything with these, then there is a scheme of leafleting being carried out by the Jamaat. They should take full interest and part in this. In America, our Khudam, many of them who have an American attitude, they felt that this tabligh they had to do because there are so many things happening against Muslims then if we go to people's house and tell them that we are Muslim and that this is our education and teaching regarding Islam then perhaps no one will listen to us and not only will they not listen to us but perhaps they will take a harsh response and they will give abuse so these khudam became engrossed in this complex but when I said to them that do this leafleting work and some of them showed courage and they started doing this, they received a very good response. So then because of that, after other people started joining them, then they saw that those people who had a complex, they said that what we were thinking, the complete opposite has occurred. Their involvement therefore increased greatly. And not only this, we saw that many important and significant newspapers, the columnists and writers of it, they became involved in the scheme. And then in that newspaper, whose circulation is in millions, they wrote that this is a message of love and peace that is being given by Jamaat Ahmadiyya. And this provided new means for Tablik. So therefore, there is no need to become involved in any kind of complex. 
And this is such a work through which you can show the world the path of guidance and you will also become the recipients of Allah the Almighty's blessings. So therefore, these means and resources, the internet for example, do not use them for the wrong thing. For example, sitting down, waking all night and looking at obscene or wrong things all on the internet. Instead of that, you should go to our websites. Read the allegations of the opponents. Give the response to them. Learn the response to these allegations and provide them. That if you do this, such an open means will be open that will become the means of increasing you in religious knowledge. Then there are the wrong or evil things in the environment. For example, the wrong fashion, there is a jihad against these things. This is the work of every khadim and tifl who is in his consciousness. Every fashion is not that which must be adopted. Sometimes people in fashion, if somebody wants to keep a beard, then you should keep a beard for the sake of a beard, not for the sake of fashion. I have said it many times before, sometimes keep beards. They just pencil something out. I believe they must have not used a stencil for this, but however much time they do to shape out their beard, they could take that to spend it on something else. If you want to keep a beard, keep a proper beard. And keep a beard with this view that it is sunnah, the practice of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. You have many freedoms here. You should do a jihad against that. There are groups of boys, they have gangs and they tease and taunt other people. They have fights with other groups. These wrong acts, and Ahmadi must safeguard himself from it, especially those boys who are 13 or 14 years old who are stepping into adulthood. Their thought is that we are free, we are getting elder, we are becoming mature. If you are becoming mature, then your thought process, your thinking must also be mature. Being mature does not mean that those wrong things you should be involved in it. There are groups of boys and girls and they have fights and quarrels with other groups or they taunt and tease each other or other kind of wrong acts are born. You must try to safeguard from these things. It is also the responsibility of the parents that they should supervise and overlook their children in this regard. Allah the Almighty states that the believers migrate or they do hijrat. Hijrat means to move from one place to another, to migrate. But hijrat or migration also means to leave a vice and to adopt something good instead. <coughs> it also means to come into protection. That is another meaning of hijrat or migration. So therefore, try to come under the shelter of Allah and try to safeguard yourself from every evil and every bad thing in the environment. Sadr Sahib Khudam al when he sends his reports, then the pad that he sends his reports on, on one side of it, it says that the reformation of nations cannot occur without the reformation of youth. Now this is a statement which was made by the Hadrat Musliha Maud. May Allah be pleased with him. It is a slogan which every Khadim must always remember that he is a youngster. And he must not only reform himself, but after reforming himself, he needs to also reform his nation and then reform the entire world. We apologize, there was a slight technical problem. The translation will now resume after that technical problem. Hazur says that you are the servants of the Messiah of Muhammad. What was the work of that Messiah of Muhammad? His work was to bring back the faith from the Pleiades. This means that in the heart of those who follow him, faith should be entrenched in it to such an extent. That you see a prominent difference between them and others. Other people who are Muslims, they call themselves believers, they are Muslims, they say that they are believers. However, faith is that. 
which through fulfilling the commandments of Almighty Allah, it always attracts a person to coming towards fulfilling the commands of Allah. This is true faith which should be born in the heart of a person and in the heart of an Ahmadi and should be born in the heart of a youngster. So therefore, try to strengthen your faith and try to achieve this status in rank. An example and a model has been given of the followers of the Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. We find the example of the youngsters who were the believers or the followers of the Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. Allah the Almighty says, that they were just a few youngsters who believed in their Lord and we increased them in their guidance thereforth. Hazur says these were those people who believed and then for many hundred years they safeguarded their faith. Now many hundred years does not mean many hundred years because a youngster does not remain young for many hundred years. So what this means is that they maintained this faith in their future generations and they kept for treading on the path of guidance where it is mentioned the ashab e kaf the people of the cave, they kept hidden in the cave and they kept safeguarding their faith and they kept maintaining and establishing their faith in their future generation and progeny. These people did not believe in the Trinity. These were not those people who believed in the wrong concept that came afterwards. These people believed in the oneness of Allah. They comprehended Allah. These were those Christians who understood Allah and for many hundred years they safeguarded this faith. Then, because there was no due promise of Allah with them, then there was a time when Christianity became mutated and it became spoiled. And when Christianity spread in the world, then their faith also weakened. However, an Ahmadi, those people who accept the Messiah of Muhammad, those who say that they are the followers of the Messiah of Muhammad. It is a promise of Allah with these adherents of Him that until the Day of Judgment, Allah the Almighty will keep this Jamaat established and because of this, the servants of the Messiah of Muhammad will keep on progressing and advancing and attaining further guidance. This is why it is required of us to assess our own self that to what extent are we established and steadfast in our faith? If we increase in our faith, then Allah the Almighty will increase us in guidance and provide us His reward. So we must always draw our attention towards this. In your word, in your deed, in your character, there should be a prominent difference. You should show this to the world. It is only then that you will be the recipients of Allah's blessings. As I stated, that it is a promise of Allah that the Jamaat Ahmadiyya will grow and those people of faith will keep on entering and by the grace of Allah they are entering. The majority who are sitting before me today are amongst those <coughs> whose father and grandfather's ancestors they initially believed. If you who are here, those desires of your ancestors, if you do not respect their desires, then Allah the Almighty can take away those blessings and some other people can take it. So therefore you must always take care of this. That it is better that with those new people who come, join with them and increase in your faith and increase in guidance. And be those who draw the world towards this guidance and become the recipients of Allah's blessings. Allah has made promises and they are being fulfilled. As I stated, there is a promise that the Jamaat will keep growing until the Day of Judgment and by the grace of Allah, the Jamaat is spreading. This was a promise with the Prophet Muhammad There is a promise with the promised Messiah, peace be upon him. Allah the Almighty provided many revelations to him to this effect. Amongst one of these rewards is the blessing of Khilafat. In Surah Nur, we find this promise made by Allah. 
However, where there is a promise of Khilafat, a few verses before it, what has been said is that do not claim that we will do this and we will do that and start swearing by oath that you will do all of this. In order to fill all these promises, to do all this work, to tread on the path of guidance, to increase in your faith, and in order to be loyal with Khilafat, there is no need for major or big promises. In fact, Allah the Almighty states, that comply and be obedient that in a way that is good obedience and you have actually recited this in a pledge just earlier <coughs> so therefore <coughs> this is something that in every khadim and every tifl who is in his consciousness and senses must always keep in view and maruf itad or good obedience or proper obedience is that whatever instruction you receive from the khalifa which you will always find is according to the Sharia or Islamic law. Because if you do not find it according to the Islamic law, that Khilafat will not remain a true Khilafat. But anyhow, to comply with that, to obey that, is an obligation of every Ahmadi. It is the obligation of every Ahmadi who recites the pledge. It is the necessity of every Ahmadi who enters the pledge, the, bed of, the pledge of allegiance of the promised Messiah, peace be upon him. Then I would like to draw attention towards another thing, which is to keep the habit of reciting the Holy Quran. You must regularly recite the Holy Quran. We do provide examples of the past that this used to happen in Qadian, this used to happen in Rabwa. Our elders of old used to read Quran this much, but we should inculcate this habit in ourselves. And any tifl who knows how to read the Quran, many children they have great interest in doing the Amin after doing the Amin. Then every day, whether it is half a ruku or one ruku, they should read the Quran. And the elders, they should at the very least read two rukus and they should also read the translation alongside that. By the grace of Allah, there is no doubt whatsoever that atfal, children, even those of a young age and also those who are entering into adulthood and also the majority of khudam, a large majority of them with passion and zeal, they display this. The time comes for duty, <coughs> or the time comes to provide a sacrifice, and with great passion, they perform these services and duties. They have a great relationship of sincerity and loyalty with Jamaat and the Khilaf, particularly the Makami Majlis or the Makami Jamaat, they give duties with great passion. <coughs> And for the last 27 or 28 years, they are giving these duties with great ardor and zeal. <coughs> but alongside this passion and zeal, in order to give it even more blessings, in order to attract the true blessings of Allah, it is our responsibility that that relationship with Almighty Allah, we need to create that relationship. And as I have stated, that entails prayer and worship. <coughs> You should inculcate a greater interest than before. So Azur says, I will repeat another time that draw your attention towards prayer, to regularly reciting the Holy Quran, to reading the books of the Promised Messiah, peace be upon him. These are the obligations of an Ahmadi and particularly the youngsters give special attention towards these things. <coughs> if you establish these examples, if you increase in knowledge of the to reading the Quran and the Promised Messiah, peace be upon him, books, then tabliq will become easy for you. And when you establish your models, you can also bring the attention of other people towards here. Those Christians who lived in the caves, who were youngsters, they were also khudam. Keep their model in view who made a resolution to remain steadfast on faith and until they, that resolution remained intact then their unity and their relationship with Allah remained intact. The followers of the Holy Prophet وسلم, they were mainly youngsters. <coughs> they were those who gave their life and in every dangerous and threatening situation for the sake 
of de- safeguarding the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu they fought in front of him and to the left and right of him. So therefore our youngsters as well, they should inculcate this passion that in this era, how can we spread Islam and Ahmadiyya, the true Islam in the world, and whilst establishing our example, how can we increase our levels of sacrifice? How can we take part in true jihad? And how can we attain that purpose for which Allah the Almighty has created us? May Allah the Almighty enable all of you to achieve this. And may all of you be those who increase in piety. Now please pray. Yes, <laughs> sir.